what is the recommended hardware for the Proxmox virtual environment. If you are using for the production environment, you must go for the high quality hardware. I will not be talking about any specific brand here. You can go with any brand, but it needs the high quality hardware. If I talk about the local storage, Proxmox supports almost all kind of local storages like DAS, which is direct attached storage, SAN, which is storage area network, or NAS, which is network attached storage. It also supports the distributed storage, which is the Ceph storage. Proxmox also supports the clustering, which means that multiple Proxmox installation can be managed within a same cluster. It becomes easy for us to maintain and manage the Proxmox virtual environment. So you can manage the storage centrally, you can manage the virtual machine centrally, you can do the migration of virtual machines or containers, or you can even manage the replication without any downtime. But for all of this, of course, there are various hardware options which you can go for. So let us talk about the recommended hardware. It totally depends on the type of installation you are going for. What is the size of your data center? What is the requirement of the virtual machines that you are going to have? And what is the purpose of the installation? Any installation you go for, it will need, of course, three major components. System architecture should be 64-bit. Proxmox only supports 64-bit CPU with virtualization support enabled. You can go with the system architecture of AMD or Intel 64-bit with the virtualization supported CPU with the tag on Intel VT or AMD V. If I talk about the memory, once you install Proxmox, as Proxmox application is installed on Debian, Debian operating system also needs the memory. So minimum 2 GB RAM is required for this installation. And then, of course, depending upon how many guests machine you will be installing, how many containers you will be installing, how many virtual machines you will be installing inside Proxmox virtual environment. So memory will totally depend on that. And additionally, if you are configuring Ceph or ZFS on your Proxmox virtual environment, for every one terabyte that you will be adding as a storage, you will need at least one GB of RAM for every one terabyte. If you have 10 terabytes, so you will need 10 GB of RAM for storage. And additionally, of course, you will need to have RAM to support all the virtual machines. If I talk about the storage, it is recommended to use the SSDs for the storage due to its performance. And if I talk about the operating system storage, I recommend you to use the multiple SSDs. If your server supports the hardware rate, then you must go for the hardware rate. When you use hardware rate, you will not be able to use ZFS or XFS. And for VM storage, if you are using the hardware rate, then you can go for hardware rate. If your server doesn't support the hardware rate, then you must go for the Ceph storage or ZFS. But you have to remember that if you are using hardware rate, then ZFS and Ceph should not be installed on hardware rate. Then if I talk about network interface cards, you should have the redundant network interface cards to make sure that if any of the network fails, other network is able to take care of. Proxmox supports 10 Gbps or higher network cards. And for PCI pass-through, of course, virtualization support, VTD or AMDD, these flags should be available to ensure that the PCI pass-through will become possible. So this was about the production environment. If you are testing it just for the evaluation and understanding or learning for this particular course, if you want to learn how you can get started with Proxmox, you can install Proxmox on any low-end system, which is 64-bit and the CPU supports the virtualization. You can use that. I have also explained you how to install it on Zima board, how to install it on the mini PC of B-Link. And you can also even use the virtualization like VirtualBox or VMware to test and evaluate the Proxmox virtual environment. You will need 64-bit CPU with the virtualization support. One network interface card will be more than enough. One GB RAM will be more than enough to test and try Proxmox virtual environment. And if I talk about other system requirements, of course, you need to have the network connection, you need to have the USB flash disk, or you will need to have the DVD drive if you want to prepare the bootable media. Once you install it and you want to access the Proxmox virtual environment, you will need the browser. I have shown you some of the hardware that I have used in my home lab for the past installation that will give you an idea that what kind of hardware you can go for. But choice is yours. You can use any hardware for the production environment, for the home lab, for test environment, for the data center at your office, or for your clients, you can go with any of the high quality hardware depending upon your needs and requirements. Ensure that your hardware infrastructure is stable before you go for any virtualization platform. Proxmox is definitely my choice. It is one of the best platforms that I have ever used. Let us move to the next video and understand what type of hardware we can use and then we'll go for the installation.